Hey everyone, welcome back to Colorful Indian. I'm so happy to have you here today. While I'm going to be doing a makeup look for you with two palettes that I'm dying to play with together. So that would be the Genuine Gems palette by Simply Posh and then the Royal Your palette by Nomad. Um, the reason I want to kind of pair these two together is because it, kind, it just seems kind of obvious. Um, you know, they are both beautiful jewel tone palettes and I feel like they would just go so well together. If you're interested in the topic of grief and experience, exploring that with me today, then stay around. Grief is a topic that's not always talked about. Why? Because it's often uncomfortable. And I think that, you know, part of being a counselor, a mental health therapist, I actually have to help people process their grief and deal with it. I myself have gone through very difficult periods in my life. I'd say they're trials, real trials that have been absolutely devastating, overwhelming. Okay, so let's briefly talk about those five to seven stages of grief. So there are many different models, but the one that I learned about was basically by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She basically studied cancer patients and she found that they all went through, you know, these stages of grief and she came up with her five stages of grief. And recently I was reading about a sixth stage. So denial is essentially when you're not even able to process what has happened to you. So this is, you know, shock, disbelief, just not being able to accept what you've even heard and it's also your body's way of kind of helping you to manage overwhelming feelings and pain because it is simply too painful at that moment to even think about what has happened. So this can look like, you know, just not being able to accept what's happened, um, saying over and over again, I just can't believe this, like how did this happen? Um, I definitely felt that way when, you know, my dog passed and um, when several family members passed away during COVID as well, I found myself just going, this can't be real. Like this, it just doesn't feel real. Like, how could that be possible? The stage of denial is all about surviving what you have just heard or gone through. So basically the loss. I'm not just talking about in terms of death, but anything really that has caused you grief. So the stage of denial is uh, very overwhelming. You know, you may find yourself just wondering if life has meaning, if you will be able to get through this, um, and just not being able to really fully absorb what has happened or the reality of the situation. I know that for myself personally, the stage of denial lasts for quite a while. Um, simply because I don't process things as fast as other people. So when I hear that people have passed away or any form of grief, even if it's, you know, um, <clears throat> the, the loss of a relationship, uh, the loss of a friendship, uh, the loss of a pet, and anything <laughs> that, that, you know, brings me grief, it becomes very difficult to fully accept that this has actually happened because I don't want to face that reality. Sometimes it's just too painful. And then there are other times when it is easier to actually um, accept the situation and what has happened. So it actually differs, you know, for people. Different people are able to go through this stage, you know, differently at their own pace. There's no time limit that's actually set for, you know, all of these different stages that we're going to be talking about. The next stage is anger. Uh, anger is basically what starts to happen when you slowly start to accept a bit of the situation. Uh, you may be very angry at yourself or, you know, the other person or, you know, whoever has been involved. Um, it's basically when you're kind of trying to search for some meaning to what's happened, I think, as well. Because you know what's happened has happened, but it is still raw. And it's very, very hard to actually fully accept that this has happened and it could involve blame as well. So anger and grief, it's a very, it's a very interesting emotion because I think I've gone through life seeing a lot of people who are just extremely angry about things have a lot of grief that has not actually been described as grief. I myself, you know, after going through the events that I described in my PTSD video, um, I was extremely angry. And there was so much anger, it was like rage. 
and I think it was only in 2021 even though I'd already gone for therapy before right but like in 2021 it was during that year that my therapist had actually reframed anger for me as grief and that was one of the most important sessions I think that I've ever had in my life because it really opened up my eyes to the faces of grief. Grief can show up in so many different ways and it's very sad because when grief is not dealt with it actually festers and it starts to affect other people around you and it's just a very it's a very sad situation it's a cycle if you are not actually dealing with the pain as it comes along i think i've always been different in that sense that i wanted to process my emotions a lot of people wouldn't understand this like i don't think that i knew how to process my emotions but i did know that when i felt my grief i felt it very deeply and i would give myself that time and that space to just cry it out but i think that culture also plays a very big role because coming from malaysia well i mean i'm an indian citizen but i lived in malaysia and what i noticed about the culture there especially from people that i used to surround myself with was that they had this expectation that grief has a time limit and you know when you surround yourself with individuals who are telling you that it has a time limit it actually makes you feel 10 times worse because then you start feeling like something's terribly wrong with you and um again of course this this is very um subjective obviously this is very subjective it depends on your situation and what you've been going through but the whole point of anger in that moment is actually a sign that you're progressing from that first stage of shock and denial you're now moving into accepting the reality of the situation and that's why you are blaming yourself you start to you know say things like yeah i, I could have done this i could have done that they could have done this they could have done that during this stage it's almost like you're just bombarded with emotions right like one right after the next you know there's loneliness there's that feeling of um I don't think anybody else really knows what this is what what this feels like so you that that sense of loneliness is definitely pretty strong and then you may even feel things like panic or being really really worried um anxiety is probably something that you know shows up during this period of time as well so all of these things are actually perfectly normal it's normal to go through these stages you know where you're blaming yourself because you feel so angry about what has happened you may even find that things are just really really unfair and you just be like this is just so unfair like why on earth would this even happen that's also normal so the thing about anger is that sitting with your anger and addressing your anger acknowledging that your anger is there just expressing that in healthy ways is actually something that i found to be really useful i started painting for a while um, I actually was doing quite a few things to just get the emotions out. Uh, journaling was also one thing that I did a lot. So it's really, it's not a bad thing to have this kind of anger when you are grieving over something. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, allowing yourself to feel those emotions because the more you allow yourself to feel it, the more you are actually allowing yourself to heal. What I have noticed is generally that under anger lies a plethora of other emotions. Um, it's actually just the surface emotion and what lies under that surface emotion is pain, loss, um, you know, loneliness, all kinds of things lie under anger and often you find uh, love as well. You know and that's why love and grief are so intertwined it's very important during this stage to actually remember that the anger is there for a reason it's not helpful to shame someone when they're going through this stage because they are in the process of grief and i did have people who shamed me for this they they, they did shame because like i said it was a cultural thing to have this weird expectation that once something has happened to you, you just get over it. But I think what I've realized is it's not really a way of dealing with the pain. It's more a way of running away from it and putting it under the rug and never really dealing with any of that. So it festers and it just stays there. And undealt anger or undealt grief is really, really bad because, like I said before, you end up taking it out on other people and you get to a stage where you don't even know why you're feeling the way that you're feeling because you have run away from so much and that is actually very unhealthy 
So the third step that we actually go through is called bargaining. Bargaining is when you are slowly starting to accept that reality more and more, that, you know, this has happened, um, but at the same time, you have regret, and you're kind of going through the motions of, I wish that I had done this, I wish that I could have done this, um, you know, uh, if only I had done X, Y, Z during this point of time, then this situation wouldn't have happened. When I was going through my stages of, you know, grief, uh, over, I'm not talking about one specific situation, but multiple situations, I've noticed that I can actually go back and forth between some stages um, because it becomes such that you just remember things about that situation or that event and it triggers a specific thing. But um, I have gone back and forth in these stages too, you know, so like I said, there's no particular way to really go through these stages. It is a very personal experience. But right after the bargaining, um, comes the depression. An important thing about depression and bargaining is that when you're in the bargaining stage, a lot of the times you're looking back into the past because you're wishing, right, that you had done certain things to prevent the situation from happening. It's a way of trying to wrestle with what's happened and come to terms that, you know, yeah, this is the reality. Depression, on the other hand, is what happens in the present moment. And this is not the same kind of depression as, you know, the mental disorder depression. This is a natural response to grief where you start to feel very low, numb. You start wondering if there's a point in living, um, if there's a point in going on, uh, because, you know, something horrifying or devastating has actually happened in your life. Again, probably a cultural thing, or you can even share with me your personal experiences of the depression stage, but a lot of people feel that when you're in this place, you know, um, like for me, my experience was just being tired all the time, withdrawing from situations, and yes, I did go through the stages of grief even when I was going through my PTSD, which is kind of crazy, because I can remember all of these things and all these processes happening, you know, and I was just thinking about the number of people who really were like, you need to heal, you need to get over this, you need to move on. That was all that, you know, I was being told. And the truth is that sometimes the grief just doesn't go away. Um, it doesn't mean that it has to go away. Like, in my opinion, I, I feel like, you know, if it comes, it comes, and I allow myself to just feel that wave hit me and wash over me, and I cry for, you know, however long I need to cry. I address, you know, I kind of like, go to my Bible, I go and I talk to God about it, I take my grief to him, and then I go about the rest of my day now. Um, that was very different to how I actually managed my grief in the past, which was um, not really knowing how to even get out of the situation, you know? But um, of course, mine was very much, again, linked to everything else that I'd gone through with PTSD, and th there have been other situations too that have happened, you know? So the whole point being that Depression is that stage where people seem to think that you should not actually be sad anymore. But I actually think that when you've lost something, in, in my case, I felt like I had lost my identity. And it was a very painful loss because I could not recognize who I was anymore. So it was a very appropriate response to losing something that meant so much. You know, it's a huge thing. It's not a small thing by any means. The fifth stage is acceptance. Now, acceptance is not, you know, us going, okay, what happened was okay, or anything like that. It's, it is simply accepting the reality of the situation and that it can't be changed. It can be small things, like simply just remembering things that you loved about that person, but also being in that space where you realize that they're no longer here, and that that's the sad reality of it, and that we are still here, though and that we need to pick ourselves up and heal. So the sixth stage is meaning. I read this book um, by David Kessler, and uh, it was talking about that sixth stage of meaning and finding meaning in life through people, you know, different connections. It's very subjective for people how you find meaning, and it basically enables to start getting back, I think, into that routine of life, trying again where once you had given up, um, but even even in the process of grief, you are still trying, you know, if you're going through that process, you kind of are trying. So I wouldn't exactly say that it's given up in the normal sense, but this is kind of like a stage where you're starting to actually f feel like life has meaning. 
um, even after experiencing a horrifying loss and that is a huge part of the healing too so you start to live a life outside of your grief you know and it's not that the grief goes away and that we never see it again i mean that's why when you know anniversaries or dates or situations or places remind us of that situation that we went through the grief that we've experienced we immediately feel it all over again like i said for me i tried many different things and different things work for different people um this is a just one of the other stages really of healing and it definitely takes time to get here so i would say give yourself some patience and some grace as you go through that process of grief um i have experienced amazing grace from god you know through all of these stages even in a recent situation that i went through where i had to let go of a um, relationship that has been around for the longest time and i did go through grief because it was so painful but to me something that really helped was uh, I, I went to church and um, oddly enough this was a church where they you know where people would choose the psalms that you sing and it was a slightly different approach but someone had chosen this song and there was a word th th there were words in this song that directly touched on what my experience was and it was basically saying that even though this person had departed you know god was still there jesus was still there and to me that meant everything because i realized that even the smallest things mean so much to god i cried um i think i was singing but then when i came to that particular verse i just choked up because i was like okay yeah you know what's going on <laughs> so that was um it was very moving and it definitely touched my heart to know that you know god cares that much Having God, um, you know, reach out to me in that way through church and just through a psalm, it was so simple, right? And I really wasn't expecting anything because I was already pretty miserable that day when I went to church. But um, it meant so much to me and I was moved because it made me realize that I really wasn't alone in my grief. And this really ties up with what the Bible says, that we do not have a, a God that is indifferent to our sufferings. Uh, you know because jesus went through so much suffering and um it really gave me a sense of peace just being like okay you know you're walking right there with me and that's all i need so um you know having someone actually see your grief and acknowledge your grief it's a very powerful thing and it's very essential i think to healing as well because when you feel validated in that sense um it just makes you feel like you're not alone anymore and that someone else has seen you grieve and they're okay with it and they're willing to just let you get through that process you know without shaming you but by supporting you the last thing i want to mention about the stage of meaning is that hope is actually very much linked to it and it's actually very hard to be hopeful when you're going through all of that pain in the previous stages um, and the way that you go about seeking meaning also changes you know because when you're initially grieving over things it's different you may not even feel like there is meaning or that there is hope anymore but once you're coming into that sixth stage it's like you're a different person so grief actually changes us in a sense so before i go how can we support people with grief i think one of the simplest things is to not immediately start talking about positive things because that's one of the ways you can dismiss what a person has gone through it can only add to their pain and make them feel like they're not being heard as i mentioned previously having someone acknowledge and validate your grief and even paraphrase or paraphrase meaning you can even say back to a person exactly what they're going through like when you see them in pain you can say things like you've gone through a devastating loss and i'm so sorry you know ways of describing like i'm just giving a very generic statement obviously like if i heard someone actually giving me um if i saw if, if i actually saw an actual situation i would be 
a bit more specific and I would touch on things that they've mentioned as well and be like, you've gone through X, Y, Z, and that is absolutely horrifying and it is perfectly normal for you to be feeling this way and it's okay. You can stay here and you can grieve for as long as you need to, you know, because that's what you need at that moment. So that is just the simplest way really to give support by just recognizing their grief when it's actually there. General positive statements about, you know, how you're going to heal, etc. You know, like there's a silver lining and all that kind of thing. It may seem like a good idea at the time, but um, I think in the throes of grief, sometimes we need to realize that grief goes a lot slower than we would like it to. And while it may be uncomfortable to see someone crying or grieving for something that they have lost, it is a very normal response to what they have gone through and you know sometimes just saying something positive in that moment is extremely dismissive it is not helpful so if you know someone who is grieving just remember that while it may seem like a good idea it probably isn't that's not what they need in the moment they just need their pain and their grief to be recognized so this is the final look it's basically all that i have to share with you today on the topic of grief. I decided to keep this video a little shorter. Let me know if you actually found this to be helpful, um, if it helped you to understand some things about your own processes of grief. If you want to hear more about grief and you want more information on it, I'm happy to share information with you. Just drop your questions below or send me a DM on Instagram or whatever and we can have a talk about it. But either way, I just want to let you know that you are loved and, you know, I'm really happy that you are taking the time to heal because that's a really important thing. I will see you soon for another video. I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead. Lots of love to you. Bye.